welcome everyone. Um, for our first session, our first speaker is going to be Ms. Aya Badawit um, from the Christensen Lab. Right here is the insular cortex. 
So by using these coordinates, we know exactly where we're trying to find um, uh, the insula or the amygdala and how we can inject the virus and cannula into the brain. So here's like a sneak peek of one um, surgery we did. So the tools are right here um, and we shave the rat's head and then we install the virus and cannula. After that we seal it with dental cement and then finally the rat's doing well. We keep it on a heating pad so it um, eases the um, healing. Um, but after that, uh, we want to we want to make sure that we place the virus and the cannula in the proper positions. So what we do to make sure is use a cryostat. And um, once we perfuse the rat, we take its brain and um, cool it. And the cryostat is really helpful because it maintains um, the brain to be frozen as we slice it to like approximately 40 nanometers, which is really thin. And then once we have them sliced up, we gather them or mount them on slides right here. And this finally allows us to see our brains under the scope. But when we um, use fluorescence microscopy, we want to make sure that we keep two questions in mind. One, is the cannula inserted in the correct brain region? And two, is the virus expressed in the region of interest? As you can see here, um, that red circle, <laughs> is where the uh, cannula track is. And you know this because it has um, a damaged tissue, which is like a black track. But to the left of it, you notice that there's a virus. And why this is problematic is because we didn't, we didn't find any neuronal activities or um, reading projecting in the computer. And this is due to the fact that the virus wasn't installed under the cannula. Why it's important for that to happen is because Remember how I said the LED light shines down in through the cannula from the optical fiber? So that LED light allows the GCAMP um, uh, neurons to activate and uh, sort of send back that um, green light into the um, machinery and allows us to see what the neurons are doing. But in this case, we weren't able to see anything, which makes sense since the virus is not under the cannula. Here's another example where the virus is wrapped around the cannula track. Um, but right here, notice that this is the insular cortex. So this is the start of where we start to um, look at uh, insular cortex neurons. Notice how the cannula tract is uh, really high above that area of interest. Um, so not only is the fault from the virus, but as well as the cannula sometimes. If the cannula is too high, it won't be able to shine light efficiently into the area of interest. And so that leads us to goals for the future. Um, Hopefully, once we actually place the virus and the cannula in the proper locations of the brain, we ultimately want to track um, what the what viruses, uh, what the pathways the virus acts on, and um, how this can really show us um, information about the neurology of a rat. Because this this may be important when we discover something and possibly apply it to human neurology in the future. Um, so. Uh, with that, I'd like to thank Boston College RU program and NSF for giving me this opportunity, as well as the psychology lab, um, my PI, Dr. John Christensen, and my mentors, Nathan, Anthony, and Nick. Thank you. Um, thank you, guys. And if there's any questions, I'd like to take them. Lovely talk. Um, so I was wondering, the damage that occurs with the placement, is that something that will resolve or will, um, with, inc with improved technique, it'll be reduced? Is it something to be concerned about or, or is it just something that happens? Um, yeah, I don't think it's, it's like too much of a concern because eventually what happens is that we perfuse the brain, so it, like clearly the damage is to resolve. Um, but it's just to show us, it, like, it's a kind of helpful to show us where the cannula was placed. Um, just for the experiment, you know, to understand where, uh, like, the placement of everything was and if it was at an accurate location. Another question? Yeah. Uh, so you have an issue placing the cannula in the correct spot. Do you guys have any plans for what you're going to do to improve the accuracy? Um, I believe it's really on um, trial and error and, like, uh, like really making sure that we follow the Bregma locations is an important aspect of 
being accurate um, during these surgeries. So I mean, if you if you truly like have, you know, like you, like if you're really because like what what happens is we're, we put them in like a nose bar and then we have to like um, adjust these markings to the Bregma location. So if you're really accurate with that adjustment, then you'll probably be able to like at least get them close to where you want them to be. Questions? Thank you. Our next speaker is Ms. Yu 